Hey guys, MasterCollects here, and I'm here to talk to you about Project Hashtag Back From Mac. That's right, the PC build is just about to start. In fact, I've just come back from the guys over at Trusted PC Man, a local PC building company who also do local and remote support for companies and individuals. They're a great bunch and I've known them for a few years, so I trust them to build the 2016 workstation that I'm gonna be working on a lot. And I mean a lot. Team Four Star is gonna have a big year in 2016, so I need to be prepared for the challenge. So talking with one of the senior members of Trusted PC Man, Dan, we managed to come up with a somewhat, you know, suitable and more mature, one that's more future-proofed and pragmatic. Yes, I did say in my previous video that I was gonna go Force of the Wall 5960X but up the wazoo and rah! I had to kind of pull back from that when I realized that actually my budget doesn't really allow that, to be honest. I mean, I could stretch the budget, but that's the beauty of PCs, really. You can just upgrade them further down the line, so don't start off too strong. So production of the build could be starting in the next few days, so while I'm here, I thought I'd just rattle off all the actual final components that are gonna go into this build. First off, the case. In the end, I thought about going absolutely aluminium all the way, making it look dead sexy or flashy and LEDs everywhere. But you know what? I kept being drawn back to the NZXT H440, the 2015 edition specifically, with better ventilation and cooling because the original 2014 version had some, not issues, but people said that the ventilation could be a little better in their minds. <laughs> Actually, funny story related to this. I showed the case to my girlfriend and she mentioned that it looked like a fridge. At first I was a little bit unsure what she meant, but then I had a bit of an epiphany. Goku likes food. TFS Goku? Call it the fridge! It's going to be dubbed the fridge. <laughs> I think it's perfect. It, it works splendidly. It's gonna like have a white, black and blue theme. Oh, it's gonna look cool now. Processor, I've gone down from the 5960X and even the 5930K to be honest, because I'm only planning to run one, maybe two graphics cards. And those other two processors are geared towards three and four graphics card solutions. I'm going down to its little brother, the 5820K. I'm planning to overclock it, of course. It's still six cores, which means that it's two cores more than mainstream i7 processors, so the, the high-end consumer-based processors. Not only that, it'll also mean I'll still have a good foothold when it comes to 3D graphics for Team Four Star. So I'm thinking, yeah, that's pretty solid. And yeah, it's overclockable. So this will do me just fine for several years. Speaking of the motherboard, I'm going with the Asus X99 Deluxe. And Dan actually pointed me to the 3.1 version which actually has support for USB 3.1, which is the latest version of USB, Universal Serial Bus, which is the standard connection that you plug in hard drives, controllers, mug warmers, that novelty USB toy that your mate at your office has. It just looks really nice. It, it, the white of that works with the white of the case, and mm, lovely. I've had my mind on the X99 Deluxe pretty much ever since I started specking it in my mind months ago. Now onto the RAM. Now, I was gonna go with the G-Skill Ripjaw 4s because for the longest time, they were the cheapest DDR4, which is the latest version of RAM that you can get because they were cheap. And they looked apart and they did what I wanted it to do. However, the budget meant that now I was going down from the 5960X to the 5820K, I could actually get slightly better quality RAM. And I got went with the Corsair Dominator Platinums. 64 gigs of it. I saw that last year for 64 gigs of the stuff, we're talking almost a thousand pounds. Now it's like half that. Bargain! Hard drives wise, for the boot drive, I'm going for a 500 gig Samsung 850 Evo SSD. Uh, for blistering fast performance when it comes to boot up speed, so when you turn it on, it will come to life really quick, like probably under 30 seconds, who knows, as well as for applications. So that means applications load really quick. And also I can install a couple of games on there and they'll run quick too. But anyway, as for the main files and projects and all that kind of stuff, they can run on two four terabyte Western Digital Blacks. And I will configure them to operate them in RAID 1. It means that if one drive fails, I haven't lost my data and I can either get that other drive fixed or I can get it replaced. 
and it will be rebuilt and everything will be fine. So I've got a fail safe in there, so that's good. Especially with a lot of projects. Power supply, I won't touch on it too much, but it's a 1000 watt EVGA Supernova G1. 80 plus gold efficiency, so that means it's always above 80% efficiency. Actually quite close to 90, so that's good for power efficiency when it comes to a power supply. And one note, if you are building your own PC, do not, and I repeat, do not cheap out on your power supply. And also make sure you've got plenty of headroom at the top, so like 25% above what you need. It means that you can expand your content in your PC as well as you're not stressing your power supply out. So just a little tip there. As for cooling, I'm going for a Corsair Hydro H110i GTX. That was on the recommendation by Dan. I was perfectly fine with the H100 GTs, but the GTX means that they have a slightly bigger fan, which means better cooling efficiency. And the reviews are just mind-blowingly good. So why not? Right graphics card. You know how I was having being a bit of a quandary between which 980 Ti I was thinking about? In the end, I've gone with the 980 Ti Water Force. Why? Water cooling, and also it's one of the most powerful 980 Ti's you can get. As I was talking about in the last video, I was talking about ultra wide, and it was going to be an ultra wide, but which one? In the end, I've gone with the LG 34UM95P. And why does it have P in it? <laughs> Sorry, immature there. The P is actually a notification that it's for European-based power supplies. So yeah, that's what's going into the fridge. <laughs> Juicy graphical goodness. Thanks to the guys over at Trusted PC Man. You can check them out on Twitter here, as well as check out my Twitter here. And don't forget to subscribe there. In the next part, uh, hopefully you'll be actually be able to see the fridge in all its glory. Um, I'm still thinking about a keyboard, so if you have a recommendation for a keyboard, um, feel free to leave a comment. One note, it has to be silent. I need a silent keyboard, so I don't want a clickety-clacky one. I'm actually quite happy with a chiclet keyboard, but hey, if you guys have another recommendation, just feel free to say. Anyway, until next time, guys, catch you later.